Mr. Thompson here. We're looking at standard four of U.S. history, analyze the ideological, military, social, and diplomatic aspects of the American Revolution. More specifically, we're going to look at part E of that standard, analyzing the roles of women, Native Americans, and enslaved and free blacks in supporting the war effort. Women, American Indians, and enslaved and free blacks all played a role in supporting the American Revolutionary War effort. In addition to the efforts of the Daughters of Liberty to find alternative goods to clothe and feed families during the pre-Revolutionary War boycotts, women in America often traveled with soldiers and sometimes served as spies during the war. Although many American Indians sided with the British during the Revolutionary War, some in New England supported the Patriots. Enslaved and free blacks participated in the war, often siding with the Patriots by enlisting in militia groups. They believed that the fight for American freedom would secure rights for themselves as well. Military encampments also included large numbers of women. They were known as camp followers and would wash, sew, cook, and nurse the wounded and sick in the camp. The women followed the soldiers because they were often afraid, hungry, and looking for work. Officers' wives also would be encamped with the soldiers from time to time. According to Mount Vernon records, Martha Washington spent 52 of the approximately 103 months of the war with or near George Washington. The number of women traveling with the American soldiers varied depending on the location and whether or not the military was actively engaged in a campaign. There is even evidence that a few women, such as Deborah Sampson, disguised themselves as men so they could participate in the fighting. As the questionable legend of Molly Pitcher portrays, she had been giving water to the soldiers when her husband collapsed and she took his place in firing the cannon. Molly Pitcher may be the characterization of the combined realities of some women in the Revolutionary War including a woman named Margaret Corbin. Samson and Corbin are the only two women to later receive federal pensions for their Revolutionary War service. Other women served as spies for the Continental Army. The British Army frequently hired local women to clean, cook, and sew for them. This arrangement allowed great access to British commanders and for eavesdropping on their plans. So, you know, ladies in the background, like, acting like she's all dusting, but she's really like, oh, what's that? Sounds like a great plan. Got him! Some female spies reported directly to Patriot commanders and others sent messages stitched inside button covers or the hems of clothing. Their ability to inconspicuously gather information made them quite valuable to the Patriot cause. There were also loyalist women who acted as spies among the Patriots and reported back to the British. The American Indians found themselves in a difficult position because the colonists were fighting the British over control of North American lands. Most of the Western American Indians sided with the British in an effort to try to prevent further settlement of that region by American colonists, as was the policy of the British Proclamation of 1763. Other American Indian groups in the East were divided on which side to support. The six tribes of the long-standing Iroquois League were divided. Two tribes, the Oneidas and the Tuscaroras, supported the Patriots in the Revolutionary War. The other four tribes, the Mohawks, Seneca, Cayuga, and Onondaga, sided with the British. The Cherokee tribe in the South also split its loyalty between the Patriot cause and the British. The allegiance of the small number of American Indians to the colonists 
had little impact on the outcome of the war. Those who did help to fight on the side of the victorious Americans were dismayed when the negotiations to the Treaty of Paris did not include American Indian representatives and their lands were not protected from colonial settlement. You can imagine being an American Indian, being like, okay, so I just helped fight and uh, you're not gonna ask me to come with you, talk about negotiations and you know, my land isn't protected, so you're gonna settle that too? So why did I help you again? Enslaved and free blacks, in many cases, viewed the American Revolution as an opportunity to expand their own rights with the basis for revolution being a call to protect natural rights. Crispus Attucks, a black man living in Boston, was one of the Americans killed by the British at the Boston Massacre. He was supporting the Patriots in their efforts to challenge increased British presence and control over the colonial city. Estimates suggest at least 5,000 enslaved and free blacks fought with the Patriots. However, those who fought with the Continental Army and the colonial militia groups did not receive their freedom following the conclusion of the Revolutionary War. Women, American Indians, and enslaved and free blacks all contributed to the Patriot cause through volunteering to fight and through support of the military forces. Their sacrifices, however, were not rewarded or recognized in the war's 1783 Treaty of Paris settlement. The groups were also not extended rights by the new United States government, even though natural rights were a primary concern of the Patriots' Declaration of Independence. While the cause for independence captured the loyalty of many societal groups, not all groups reaped the rewards of victory. That wraps up Standard 4, Part E, examining the roles of women, Native Americans, and enslaved and free blacks in supporting the war effort.